successfully today. A lot of, you know, hitting your receivers even in traffic. Uh, what was your assessment? Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate it. Um, I had some good protection most of the time. Uh, my receivers made some great uh, catches, like Montezzi, uh, Cam Sure, Trey Benson. Uh, those guys made the made the throw look very good when they catch the ball. So, kudos to those guys. Absolutely. And uh, Jake, you were uh, running the ball, got a lot of work today. How did it feel? Good. Thank you. I'm very grateful for every opportunity I was given. And you had a one yard touchdown uh, towards the end. What was that play like? Uh, it was uh, kind of a dream come true for sure. Scoring my first touchdown on uh, in the scrimmage. It was a good time. And uh, Twain, you had one r- really long pass completion uh, uh, today. Uh, how was it? You know, 61 yards to, to uh, Lloyd Benson. Oh yes, sir. Uh, I think it was on the left sideline. What was that play like? Um. Well. I dropped back. Uh, Trey made a great break. Uh, he was in the wake of the receiver, made a great break on the post route, and he was basically wide open. So I tried to hit him uh, hit him in his nose, and uh, he caught the ball, ran in for a touchdown. You had a little trouble in the backfield, though, on that play. You had a lot of pressure. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you know, we, we practiced that play a lot in, uh, on air, so uh, I trusted that Trey Benson was going to be in that spot, and he made it right. How do you like your mobility? Uh... I actually, I feel like that's one of my weaknesses. Uh, I feel like I'm not the fastest or quickest guy. Uh, I'm, so I've been trying to work on that in the off season. But uh, I feel like I have a lot of confidence. And um, I do trust my teammates, especially my O-line and receivers. So uh, it makes you feel way more comfortable when I'm in the pocket. First half, 7 for 700 yards. You were probably feeling pretty darn good at that point. I didn't even know. I, t- I take it one play at a time, sir. I don't even I don't I mean, be knowing you, about you the felt good. You knew things were going well for you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, even when bad things happen, I try to keep a positive mindset. All right. Then you hit a patch one for six. Mm-hmm. But you you, were, you got the call at the end of the game. So how do you shake off? I don't know if you felt bad about the one for six in the middle. How do you shake that off and then be determined to lead a winning drive? Uh, yes, sir. Um, we have a great opportunity to uh, have an officer representative, um, Mr. Tillman. And um, he does a great job with teaching us the mental game and having mental strength. So... I was not really aware of my uh, percentages. I was just taking it one play at a time and um, having confidence in that next play and trying to make something, something happen. How fun was that last drive? Uh, it was very fun. Uh, AJ, AJ was running the ball great. Montezzi made a great catch over there. And then when we got to the goal line, I was like, uh, Coach Vitti wanted to do a, a, a bootleg option, a bootleg play uh, and roll out. I was like, Mob, do y'all want to do a bootleg? Y'all want to run it in? I was like, let's run it in with AJ. and. Uh, AJ took it on in there, and uh, we did it. That, that was a fun drive right there. One more thing, Dwayne. I, mean, I remember a year ago you had a tremendous black and gold game and closed camp well. Tell me about your feelings on this camp and going into August preseason. Uh, yes, sir. Coming in um, last year, I was uh, I never got the opportunity to really play uh, much because I had uh, a lot of older guys above me. So um, I was just taking time to learn from those guys. And then this year, I feel like I'm, I feel like I've always led, but uh, I was more in that um, seniority position with being a greater uh, grade. So I felt like it was one of my responsibilities to lead to lead my team this camp, and um, I feel like I've done that pretty well. And um, I continue to build those relationships with those guys that are maybe a little a little younger, and even the older guys as well. Jake, we spoke the other day about your camp. Uh, how, how did it, how do you sum up what you were able to accomplish? Um, I'm just uh, I'm definitely very grateful for everything I've been, uh, all the opportunities I've been given this spring for sure. Um, building all these, you know, this trust and confidence with my old lineman for sure. Just How very grateful. Were you by Jacoby? Very, <laughs> very. Uh, we're really good friends for sure. And uh, yeah, great guy. Great did friend. you learn something from his technique or did he? Prove to you that yes, that's a, that's a good way to play. Absolutely, Jacoby definitely had some influence over how I played <laughs> for sure. Um, c- coming through here, obviously, there's been a great long line of uh, B backs, full backs, and you know you can take a bit and piece from how everybody ran their your, their style specifically, and hopefully you can take all those and put it together and make nice something. Thing. Great. What's it like running physical the way you do? I mean, full backs aren't get the the glory guys; they're not going to bust off you know huge gains for the most part, but. You have to do the dirty work, and you have to get those three and four and five yards. Um, what's, what's that like for you? I mean, uh, it's kind of everything, that's for sure. You just got to love it. It's kind of a mentality, for sure. Definitely black flag, black flag mentality, 100%. Thank you. Yeah. Rich. Hey, guys. Uh, Rich Do Army Radio. Uh, Jake, let's start with you. So, I uh, going through last season and now this spring, you know, with the change in the offense, how much comfortable are you with what's going to be asked to you? 
being more under center, the offense, and, and from that what's been a traditional fullback position. Yeah, I'm definitely a lot more confident in this uh, offensive type for sure, so I'm uh, pretty excited for what's to come. And it's Wayne for you, and you've seen both offenses, right, yes, from, a, from a sprint last year and finished strong in what was a shotgun-based offense. This year finishing strong in, in what's more under center. Uh, compare the two and, and your comfortability right now following this sprint. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm I'm much more comfortable this year with uh, Coach Rollo being my offensive coordinator. Um, he was the first guy when I was at the prep school, um, keeping in touch with him there. And then my freshman year, he was my quarterback coach. So I have a good relationship with him, and um, I trust in what he what he has planned for me. And uh, I'm going to just execute his plans. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Twain, do you like going from shotgun to under center and back and forth? Um, yes, sir. Um, I actually do. I feel like that. Uh, I feel like it puts the defense at a uh, they start thinking a little bit much, and when you start thinking in football, you start to play a little slower. So I do like the transition when we jump from under center and in the shotgun. But I, I feel like it's vital that we uh, keep that black flag, that black uh, flag mentality of running the ball and hitting you in the mouth every time. I would think some people would say, you know, oh, it's not an advantage because you're, you know, you run 90% uh, behind center and now you throw the ball. You guys are mixing it 50-50. Mm -hmm. Is it just a matter of knowing the plays on your part? And it has to be a mindset of, hey, whatever they tell me to do. Uh, yes, sir. It, t it takes a lot of practice. And, um, you know, just building that trust in each uh, 11, 11 uh, guy on the field. And um, when you trust each guy, knows their job, we're able to execute pretty well. Dwayne, do, is there, do you prefer being under center or shotgun? Is it is it a challenge just go back and forth? Uh, no, sir. I don't, I don't really feel more comfortable in either one. Um, I just I trust my centers to give me the ball, and then when we get the ball, we just playing football. That's great. Yes, sir. Guys, uh, Joe on Zoom. We got Dwayne Coleman and uh, Jake Rendina here. So if you want to ask your questions for those guys, go ahead. Hey guys, Joe Icono with GoBlackKnights.com. Dwayne, first question for you. Um, heard you had a big night passing the ball. Uh, you know, connecting with some of your receivers and everything. Uh, just talk a little bit about that and kind of how confident you feel in your, your passing. But, you know, I know Army's not a passing team, but, uh, you know, when called upon to do so, how comfortable have you become this spring uh, hooking up with your receivers and, and doing so tonight in the spring game? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, since day one of uh, uh, camp or spring ball, um, we've been building these relationships and timings with my receivers. Uh, I was able to trust my guy, uh, Trey Benson, today to be across the middle wide open, and I hit him for that one. Just, it's really just building trust and practice, sir. Uh, each day, you know, we go out and try to get better each day and watch the film and then just talk about it. And once we get on the same page, I feel like we're able to execute much more efficiently. And, Jake, uh, I know you got a, a number of big carries tonight, a lot of tough yardage up the middle uh, on the, the – fullback dive and and the, the running back crew is a little younger this year I know that so kind of talk a little bit about you and your teammates and and kind of how you guys came together and, and the night you feel that you had tonight how did that you know had how comfortable you feel back there and how do you think your teammates did in the backfield I think we all did a pretty good job as a as a younger unit as you said I think each individual brings a certain attribute to the table mm -hmm. And uh, when they get their opportunity, they, you know, they use that and they shine and whatever that is for sure. I'm just, uh, it's a good crew of guys, a bunch of good dudes, and I think we're going to do great things. And last question for Dwayne, you know, uh, kind of compare, you know, now you've been through your, you know, uh, one of the backup quarterbacks last year, got to kind of practice all through the season, um, went through winter conditioning drills, and now spring ball. Kind of compare, in your mind, where you are today from understanding all facets of the offense and kind of committing that to muscle memory versus where you were a year ago, maybe, at the end of spring practice. Yes, sir. Um, I feel like I have improved over time, but uh, I'm definitely not where I want to be at uh, yet, sir. Uh, I had one play today where I got sacked in the, uh, in the red zone and I should have threw it away. So just getting those little tweaks, and um, I had a few more um, mishaps as well today, but um, you know, just fixing those things and trying to be uh, as perfect as I could be. But I just try to focus on getting better each day, sir, and then just grow and see where that gets me. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir, thank you. Jake, Dwayne, you guys are all set. Perfect. You have a good one, sir. Thank you, guys. Next, we're gonna have uh, Lloyd Benson and Bill Katsianis. Lloyd, for you, some, some big plays out there. Take me through them. Uh, so we've been working at practice that play. Uh, 
for a long time now, and it just came into fruition. We've been working on the small details that really opened up the play, and then once we got there, we just executed, and it's uh, all thanks to the old lineman and then Dwayne Coleman as well. So, yeah. You get the feeling with this offense that the passing game is going to be able to take teams by surprise by running so much under center. You know, take me through the maybe the look on the defense when you're running some of this. Uh, well, the defense gets confused often because, you know, we go into the spread, then we go into the triple option. Uh, so they don't know what's coming next. So I think it's dynamic. It can open up a lot of stuff for us in the future. And, Bill, what about blocking in this offense and doing what you do? So, <clears throat> like you said, the passing game, uh, most of our pass games are, like, run hard heavy. So it's easy for us to just transition from running to pass blocking and then – we uh, hit the fundamentals a lot with uh, staying staying up with our chest in, in case of like one minute drill and stuff like that. So I thought today the offensive line especially did pretty good, at least in the black team, in the passing scenarios. Great, thanks, guys. Bill, you think that it's it's easy going from pass block to run block? And yes, sir, because uh, we do a lot of uh, play action passes. So, and then our our stances compared to about two years ago when we were in the real triple option. Uh, we were very front heavy, whereas now it's we're more on our uh, heels and stuff like that. So it's not hard to do a run and then immediately pass block. It's the same thing. Is it easier in this offense because or because you vary, you know, spread, close, shotgun, under center, versus when teams expected you to run the ball 95% of the time? Both. I think we can we can package certain formations to make it look like we're going to run, and then and then the offensive line looks like they're run blocking, and then boom, we just throw the throw the ball over their heads if they're not expecting it. But it can go both ways. If the team is expecting us to run the ball 95% of the time, and then we just throw one, it, I don't know. It's just depends on the way you dress it up. Last one, Bill. Uh, how do you feel camp went overall for the team and for yourself? For the team overall, uh, felt like at least for the offensive unit, when we came back from spring break, we were a lot more locked in on our fundamentals, especially the offensive line. The defense, I think throughout spring ball, they were they were on top of their assignments for most of the time. When we started to add in <clears throat> new formations and tags to plays, we keep them on their toes. But I think overall as a team, we did really well, especially as spring ball progressed. And then you got to see it here today. I mean, I think both sides had their ups and downs today. And then as for myself, I think kind of a new scheme offense, but we've run both variations in the past couple of years. So as for myself, it was just trying to remember all the plays from last year and then the year before that. I think same as the team, as spring ball progressed, I got a little bit better and better. And then definitely after spring break, had like some time off to let my body heal and readjust and then came back. It was good. Bill, just wanted to ask you about your recovery from the injury you had last year, what it's taken to get, get ready and be able to play uh, in the spring game. Uh, to be honest, last year I suffered like kind of a concussion. And what it took was taking some time off and then – when I did that, I just studied the playbook a lot, and I was able to teach the younger guys the plays. So they were able to lock in, and it was kind of a win-win for the whole team. And I just took time off and then came here and balled out. How is it now? Last year you were penciled in to be a center, and then uh, uh, the concussion happened. And then now you're a, a left guard. Yes, sir. What, what is that transition like for you? Easier. I would say because as a center, you've got to focus on getting the ball to the quarterback, whereas as a left guard, you already have more space between you and the defender, and then you take out the element of having to snap the ball. So the transition was much easier, to be honest. What was it, what was it like watching Brady uh, Small's development last year? Uh, I actually loved it because when I got hurt, I knew I had a concussion, and then and they brought up Brady Small, and I'm like, all right. I'm going to just coach this kid up and because I thought I was going to come back early. And I said, I was just coach this kid up. And every day I was out there with him, teaching him the plays because he wasn't really learning them as a freshman. And then he started balling out. And I was actually really proud of him and I was happy for him. Just a thought, uh, 
Concussions are a serious concern, obviously in football and in life. Uh, what, what did you learn from that? Uh, from uh, so it was important to your recovery. <coughs> You said, what did I learn? Or just what, what was important to your recovery from a concussion? Uh, it was important for me to tell myself that this is very serious because I want to be out there with my guys, and it kills me when I see them working hard and I'm just sitting there doing nothing because you really can't do anything with a concussion. So I was just trying to tell myself, you've got to wait, and then you'll come back eventually. Very good. Well, I just ask you uh, about uh, you got the 61-yard touchdown to, uh pass from Dwayne. What was that play like for you? Uh, it was exciting. It was um, very satisfying, too, all the hard work that the crew been putting in the offense. So I was just really grateful to have the opportunity. Well, what's the best, what's part of your game that uh, you're really working on now? Uh, getting in and out of breaks, uh, really focusing <clears throat> on uh, being a leader and knowing my plays. Even as a freshman, I, I still want to be able to communicate with my teammates about different uh, like plays and skills. So really just coming in and out of breaks and being a leader. That's and you're in as a slot guy? Yes, sir. That's great. How do you like being in this, in this offense? It's sort of a you know, going back, hybrid going back to the option. Uh, I think it's, a, it's exciting. Um, in high school, I wasn't a part of offense like that. Uh, I was mostly spread. But I think it's a, a new thing that I'm, I'm going to get used <coughs> to. And it's exciting, like I Very said. Good. Boy, well, just to, to have the offense have a big play like that, I mean, you guys are, it's a hybrid offense, but how much do you look forward to that transferring over to the regular season, having those big pass plays to help move the, the, the football, so to speak, for the offense? Uh, I think we're going to see plays like that often in the future. Uh, when teams load the box, I think we could uh, really make a big dynamic plays like that and really boost morale and then swing the momentum. So I think it's gonna, we're going to see a lot of that. Uh, Joe on Zoom. All right. Hey, Lloyd, Joe Icono, GoBlackKnights.com. Um, on your touchdown catch, could you uh, just break down the design of that play a little bit and what you saw uh, as you were kind of uh, starting your pattern and everything? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. So <coughs> uh, we were in a flex formation, like tight bunch. Uh, so the scheme of that play is to get the safety in the corner to go with the outside receiver so it can open up the middle of the field. Um, and it's best for – uh, two high coverages. So um, my job is to wait and get in the receiver's wake so I could really hide and mask myself until I could hit the middle when the receiver breaks out for the corner. I hit the post and the receiver uh, works out on the corner. And then, yeah, that's it. Awesome. And uh, Bill, um, you know, what was it like after, you know, winter conditioning, spring practice, working really hard? How much fun is the black gold game to be able to come out here and, and get in a game situation? Uh, Coach Munkin said it the other day in team meeting. He said not many teams get to actually play a game at the end of their spring ball. And I think it's a very special thing that we do here because you really just take everything you learn and you just let loose and you just play against your teammates. So it's a good time, and It's really just like a game. You just let everything go. Great. Thanks, guys. Rich, you want to start us off? Absolutely. Hey, Coach, Rich DeMarco, Army Radio. Um, you know, you said this was going to be a reward, right, for the spring. So how do you think that went tonight? And I know during the spring there are a lot of things you wanted to get working. How do you think it all came together for both sides tonight? Uh, it was fun, uh, just as we hoped it would be. Um, guys played hard. Some guys made some really good plays. Um, the last – just the last – uh, series of the game. The, the the black teams got the ball third and goal at the one. Uh, they get a false start penalty, moves them back. They don't convert on third down, get a field goal blocked. Great, great play by Josiah Banks to block the kick. And in, I mean, I guess it was less than three minutes, they drive the ball down and, and score and, and take the lead. And you know, just the, the mentality, the black flag mentality we talk about and uh, the fight that those guys had. It was it was fun to see. But uh, some guys made some really good plays. Um, 
It's good to see some of those inexperienced backs run the ball. Um, Randina, Carson Smith, uh, Jarrell Dixon, uh, A.J. Williams, all those guys making some good hard runs. Uh, we threw the ball and completed some passes, and our defense made a bunch of plays. They got some stop, stops on fourth down and um, some key pass breakups, uh, some sacks at the at, you know, opportune times. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of good things, but far too many mistakes, uh, self-inflicted mistakes for us to be completely satisfied. So things we can work on. But I, what I wanted was I want our guys to have fun, be competitive, and stay healthy. For the most part, I think we did those three things. And Jeff, what was your assessment of the quarterback tonight? It's a little hard to tell when they're wearing red jerseys. They don't get a chance to, to finish a run. It's a two-hand touch with those guys. But uh, those guys did, they did a good job. And, and it's a little difficult um, when you're kind of rotating guys and Sometimes in the middle of a series, you're putting in a different quarterback, and uh, that that position, maybe more than any, you kind of got to get in a groove a little bit. But I thought those guys competed really hard. Uh, Bryson did a nice job. We limited his reps. I thought Dwayne Coleman did some good things. You know, he made a, I thought he made a critical error by not throwing the ball away and taking a sack on on uh, on one drive. And then he came back the next drive and felt that pressure and tossed the ball out of bounds and, and avoided the sack and gave his, chance, uh, uh, gave his team a chance to kick a field goal on the drive. And so you know, that, that, that was encouraging. Um, that group's got to get better, and they've got to make everything go. Uh, Helms, uh, who I, I'm, I'm really excited about, just has got to the game's got to slow down for him a little bit more and he's got to get more confident he will uh Zach Mundell got got hit on a play he just kind of went kneecap to kneecap with somebody it's not anything serious but I really had hoped to see him play a little bit more and he's he's been kind of nursing an injury and coming back so there, there's guys there and we're, we're confident in that group they just they've got to improve and the more they can be in situations like they were tonight I think the more they're going to be prepared Go ahead, Ken. Now, Coach, just uh, maybe go to uh, talk a little bit about your offensive line. Uh, you are going, you went back and forth a little bit shotgun and under center uh, tonight. Um, how do you feel like your center, Brady Small? We saw Bill Cassiano, so it was out at left guard tonight. Uh, how do you feel they all reacted? I, we ran the ball pretty effectively tonight, and, uh, and that you know, obviously has got to start up front with the offensive line. <clears throat> I, I think that's a good, solid group. Brady's got a lot of experience now, starting 12 games as a freshman. And uh, it's, you know, I, I sometimes got to remind myself he's only a freshman and, and going into a sophomore year. But uh, I, obviously, I, I think he's going to have a chance to, to have another good season if he'll stay healthy. Uh, Katsianis, um, Booby Law, um, Paolo Generali, uh, David Hoyt. Um, you know, just trying to think of all the guys that, that we've rotated through with that position over the course of the, the spring. I mean, there's there's a good bunch of guys there. There's backup guys. Lane Parks has had a really good spring and positioned himself to to be a guy that we think will help us in the depth. Um, Klaska, Tyler Lee. Um, you know, there's 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 a bunch of guys there. So. I'm I'm encouraged with the with the guys that we've got and and the job that they've done this spring. There's some improvements that got to be made there. Um, <clears throat> obviously tonight, you know, there were some some uh, protection issues that we got to correct. And I think that group overall had five false starts, and that's not acceptable. We got to fix that. So there was some things there, but I, I think for the We've had we've had teams where there's been more guys that have been veterans and played and started games, but I don't know. It's, it's just a good group, and I think I think that uh, that uh, Coach Vitti and Coach Drinkle are doing a really good job coaching those guys. And just you had a, just going to the kicking game today. You had uh, four kickers out there at least. Alvarado had one kickoff that went beyond the end zone, which I th looked impressive. 
Uh, Britton had the field goal. Uh, ben, ben, uh, Charlie Bennett almost made the 54 yard, came very close on that. And Trey Gennady hit, hit a goal post. So what was your thought? Three missed field goals uh, and one was, one was blocked. So four missed field goals, uh, but three we just didn't have anything to do with the defense, just didn't make them. So we got to do a better job of putting the ball through the uprights when we got a chance to score points. Um, first kickoff went out of the went out of bounds. That was disappointing. Um, they're they're competing, and <clears throat> I think Trey's got himself at the top of the depth chart right now. But uh, you know, there's there's some there's some healthy competition, and uh, I think we'll find out a lot more when we get into preseason camp, and and uh, you know, guys know that we're getting close to the season, and the guys are going to perform under the pressure. They're they're going to be the guys that'll be up there at the top, and uh, you know the punters. I think there's competition there too. All four of those guys we got in the program, I think, are good players. Uh, I thought Allen hit a really good punt on the the uh, the situation we were kicking from about the 50. Nice high kick and made him fair catch it at the 10. That was positive. So some good stuff, but some stuff to work on. One thing, one defensive way stood out to me was Caleb Fordner made a tackle on Caleb <clears throat> Helms, just grabbed him, solid tackle. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like the defense linebackers were were playing tonight? I, I thought overall, and obviously I'll watch the film here in another hour or two, but I thought our guys tackled be better than uh, than they have all spring. I thought you know, we we've had scrimmages and we've had. Uh, <clears throat> some missed tackles and a lot of fundamental time dedicated to, to tackling. And I thought tonight they did a pretty good job and were fairly effective. We missed some tackles and, uh, and it's usually because we're not using very good fundamentals at that particular time or it might be because of our pad level, it might because, be because of our feet or we didn't wrap uh, or took a poor angle. Uh, but there, uh, those are things we can correct. But uh, but I thought the guys did a good job. Caleb's a good player, and uh, you know again he uh, you know, he's a guy that played a lot of football for us last year and made plenty of plays for us. And he's playing way more confident, uh, far more than he did probably when he started last season. So I think that was you know that's positive. There's that's a good group of guys. He and Anda Thomas, Brett Jarena, um, Adam Cash, Noah Nixon. Uh, Baylor Newsom, I mean, there's there's a there's a pretty good pretty good uh, lineup of guys there that we got some confidence in. All right, Sal. <coughs> Coach, can you talk a little bit more about Hannon Thomas? I know that with Leo's graduation, looking for somebody next to Caleb to play, and is has he progressed as being maybe possibly the guy? He you know, he he had himself positioned <clears throat> at the beginning of last season. To probably contribute a lot more than he did, and he got hurt early in the year, and uh, and that set him back. But he's a guy that that I mean, when he was a freshman on the scout team, he made a ton of plays, and uh, our coaches were really impressed with him and his uh, his instincts, his his ability to react to to uh, his keys and find the ball. So. I, I mean, I'm right now. He and Caleb probably, at least going into tonight's spring game, we're at the top of the depth chart. <clears throat> Whether it'll be that way, you know, when we play the first game or not, I don't know. But uh, they're both playing well. Brett Jarena is playing better than he has played his entire career, which is so fun to see a senior, uh, a rising senior, playing like that. So there, there's. Those three guys in particular, I think, are, are uh, going to be really solid for us. One more. Speaking of a rising senior, how happy were you for AJ to score that the touchdown Man. at the end of the game? Because he's been through, recruited as a fullback, went to tight end last year, back as a fullback, and now has a little bit of a he was He had a stop at linebacker in there, too. Uh, and uh, I, I'm really happy for him. He's had a really good spring, and there was a point in his career, probably at this point last year, coming out of spring, end of his sophomore year. I wasn't sure if he was going to ever really be able to contribute to the team. Um, 
obviously last year we, we made a, a change in the offense and he's recruited to play essentially full back in an under center option. And he got moved from that position to linebacker, from that linebacker position to tight end. And, and then when we made the transition back, really just kind of taking all those guys that were recruited to play that position and putting them back in that spot and, and see if, if you know, he could find a way to, to get in the mix. And he really has. I mean, he's, he's had a good spring. And not just running the football, doing, doing the other things too. And, and so I'm happy for him. He's a great kid. He cares so much about this team. And, uh, and so it was, it was fun to see him get in there. He, and he gained some tough yards on that drive before he scored the touchdown. In a way, do you think that moving <coughs> to that, the shotgun kind of saved his, a spot for him on this team or no? Uh, I, I think what saved his spot on the team. So we moved him to the H-back or the kind of the, the cruiser position a year ago um, to play in that, in that offense. And he, he did some really good things in preseason camp at that position. But he was competing with guys like uh, Crossan and Lingenfelter. And you know, it, it's just going to be hard for him to beat those guys out because that's kind of what they do for a living. And, uh, but we kept him around. And, and so he got his opportunity to kind of get back in that position and get in a groove. And he's had a good camp. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him and, and really proud of him for the perseverance. Excellent. Go ahead, Ken. Jeff, uh, <clears throat> you came into camp with a, the, the backfield decimated. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your impression of what you saw here? And can you carry this over to next season? So <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm getting a little cold here, guys. Um, the guys that ran the ball tonight, Jake Randina, A.J. Williams, Jarrell Dixon, Carson Smith, none of those guys have any significant snaps playing football as an Army football player on Saturdays. And I thought all four of those guys ran the ball really hard and really well tonight. Now, they're playing against their own teammates, so it's all relative. I mean, maybe we stink. So they were able to run the ball really well. But uh, now I think we got tough guys, and they were playing hard tonight, and they were competing, and those guys ran the ball and got tough yards. And uh, you know, we're going to have to do that against other people that play for other teams. But I, I was encouraged, and I think that group has really improved over the course of spring, uh, gained some confidence. And Kanye Udo's out there, who I think is the most talented guy at that position, and unfortunately, got an ankle injury early in, in camp, and and we've we've held him out. And uh, so, getting him back in the fall, I think that's only going to add to that that group of backs. And uh, obviously, the things that we're doing offensively are different than we were doing a year ago. Um, but you got guys like AJ Williams, Jarrell Dixon, Kanye Udo, Carson Smith, Jake Rendina. We're all recruited to play fullback in this offense. So it's not like they were recruited to do something else. They were recruited to play in this system. Some went to prep school, some guys came direct, but it, it was what we, we recruited them to do. So um, you know, hopefully that group of guys, is, that, that's going to be enough for us to, to be able to keep the game going and they got to hang on to the ball and get the tough yards. Jeff, you uh, used a lot of uh, under center as well as shotgun. I'm sure when the season arrives, you're going to do whatever you need to do that mm -hmm. day. But uh, we, I, I asked the guys in here before, and they all seem comfortable with being able to switch between the shotgun and the center offense. How does that make you feel, knowing that they feel good about it? Well, I, I, what I, what's important for us in terms of being able to go from one to the other is not having two different offensive systems not having a <clears throat> excuse me an under center system and having a shotgun system that they're married and there's some carryover from one to the other and uh and so that that's really been our goal is to try to create a system where there is carryover and that for the guys up front for the guys on the perimeter that there's just 
you know, it's not completely different. They're, the 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 skills and the and the fundamentals that they use to execute one isn't different from the other. And for the backs and the quarterbacks, that you know, the meshes and the the aiming points on on the run plays are there's some consistency, and it it's just hard to teach two different offenses. And so what we were doing two years ago in 2022, and what we were doing last year in 2023. Um, you know, we didn't just take those two systems and say, okay, we're going to run both of them. We've taken pieces of both of them and tried to mesh them together. And, and I think Cody's done a really good job of, of simplifying it for our guys. And, um, you know, we, we still got a long way to go. We got, we got a lot more that we're going to uh, have to, to build in to the system to have enough to play a game and have answers. But, it's uh, you know, it's not, it's not going to go like this. Uh, there's, there's, you know, the, the, the bulk of it's in right now. Still a good honeymoon, yes. <laughs> Hadn't played it. We're zero and zero. So, um, Jeff. Also, last thing about the, the quarterbacks. Uh, Bryson, you know, looked pretty good tonight. Dwayne obviously shined. Um, how do you feel about that group? Of, and you know, Bryson's ability to hold the top spot. I mean, is he? Number one, or is it a kind of a clean slate in August? No, I, I think right now, if we had to play a game tomorrow, Bryson Daly would be our quarterback. So until somebody beats him out, he's the quarterback. But it, it's good to see Dwayne Coleman building confidence and making plays and improving. And there's still things that he's got to do better. And Bryson made some mistakes, particularly early last year. It's his first season as a starter. And sometimes you learn by making mistakes. And I wish, I wish they could learn the lessons by watching somebody else. I wish they could learn the lessons in practice. And sometimes they learn the lesson by making a mistake. And unfortunately, sometimes that costs us. But uh, I thought Bryson had a really good year. Um, he's earned the, the, the spot at the top of the depth chart right now. Um, but Dwayne and Kale and Zach and you know those three guys are they're 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 in a good healthy competition to be the number two and each one of them does enough things that uh, they're they're gonna be able to compete and they're gonna be in the mix um, so there's not I wouldn't say a clear cut here's who number two is and here's who number three is at this point but none of those guys have game experience. Um, you know, Zach Mundell, his athleticism, he's, you know, he's not rocket fast, but he's a really good athlete. He's, he's really good in space. Um, Dwayne is such a good leader and, uh, and just does such a good job with the team and leading the offense. He led that last drive. And, and so those guys are different, but they're probably battling out right now for number two. And Cale Helms just got to grow up and not make freshman mistakes. And when he does that, he's, he's going to be in the mix. And lastly, Jeff, what was your favorite part of today? <clears throat> we didn't get hurt. That was the best thing. And, uh, but as far as your interactions and yeah. seeing what you wanted to see? Um, just the, the, the spirit that those guys played with, the, the, the fight in them. They, they played really hard, competed to win. Um, you know, the... The, the last series uh, of downs where the the team in the black jerseys had the ball right down there on the goal line and the team in the white jerseys didn't quit they just didn't they didn't give up they kept fighting and to to block a kick and take the ball the distance and you know just to hear the guys on the sideline cheering for their teammates and they're into the game um, you know that that's what I want our team to be, is a team that fights really hard and competes and, and is fully invested. And I felt like they, you know, they had that spirit and energy tonight. So that was, that was a huge positive, despite all the mistakes. We'll go to Joe for two quick on Zoom. Go ahead, Joe. <coughs> hey, Coach Monken. Uh, real quick, um, you know, you're replacing a lot of productivity at corner uh, from last year. Talk a little bit about the job Coach Dixon's done with that young group at corner and how you felt those guys performed tonight. Daryl Dixon is an outstanding coach. Um, he's up. He's just a 
a great professional. Uh, it's fun to sit in his meeting room and listen to him teach. It's fun to go over and watch him coach guys in individual drills and the detail of fundamentals and techniques and the knowledge that he has. He is, he is a fabulous football coach. And he's been here now eight seasons with us, I think it's been, um, and, and just done a great job. Started out as a linebackers coach, then transitioned to the corners. Um, we had worked with Jay Bateman at Ball State, and Jay brought him in, and I'm glad he did. And I feel incredibly fortunate he hadn't left because that guy could coach anywhere, any level, any team. He's, he's outstanding, and he's done a great job with this group of, of corners. Uh, very little experience. Uh, Platt has played some and, and has started a couple of games. Uh, Jaden Mays was out the whole season with, with uh, eligibility issues. Um, so just to get him kind of back in the groove. And the rest of the guys are a bunch of freshmen. Uh, I shouldn't say it. Justin Weaver's a, a sophomore, going to be a junior. And, and he's as talented as anybody we've got at that position. And so Daryl, you know, I know is going to continue to work with him and, and bring him along. And hopefully we'll be able to get a lot out of Justin Weaver. But the, uh, the real young guys, Joe Stevens and uh, Jackson Hammond, you know, those guys are, are you know, they're the future of the program. They're going to have to play. They're going to have to be special teams guys. They're going to have to be ready to go in the game. And, and Daryl will have them ready. And a couple of them aren't ready yet, but, but they will be. It won't be because they're not well coached. And, uh, Coach, um, Terrell Robinson was one of the veterans that didn't dress today. Was that just out of precaution primarily? Uh, he, uh, T. Rob's not ready to, to go yet. Um, he had a, a, a postseason procedure, and he's been held out since uh, really since that procedure in the off season, and uh, and we he didn't play at all in the spring, and so we'll bring him back as the summer goes along, and hopefully we're gonna have him ready to go when we start the season in the fall. And last question for you, Coach. Um, you know, pretty even distribution of under center and shotgun plays tonight. Was that by design or is that just kind of how it worked out tonight? It's probably just kind of how it worked out. So Cody Worley was calling the plays on the black team. Mike V was calling the plays for the gold team. Um, so I, I, I know they had conversations before the, before the, the game tonight and just kind of what they wanted to do, what they wanted to get on film. Um, you know, obviously there's – when one guy's calling it, it's, it's, it's going to be – when Cody's calling it, it's going to be him just kind of getting in the groove and feeling the game and, and, uh, and what's right at the time. But you know, there, I think there will be a good healthy mix. And there may be some games where we're under center more than shotgun and some games where we're in shotgun more than we're under center. But there's a reason for all of it. It's not a – hey, we need to run this many plays in the gun. It's just kind of what we feel needs to be done at that particular time. And uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. And uh, I think you know, for, for, for both sides and for us in general, we wanted to get every player in the game. We wanted to get everybody's significant snaps and have a chance to evaluate them. And so – some of the plays we called were, were just an attempt to get the ball to a certain guy and give him a chance to make a play. And so it, some of that might have been uh, a call just, hey, I want to get a look at this. And, and so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see where we're at in the fall and what we need to do. And, and uh, I, we'll, we got a pretty good idea of who we need, who we need to be. Thanks, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Have a good night. Okay. Thanks for being here, everybody.